Hello and welcome back to another episode of Into the 99, where we've got 99 cards because Commander's number one. I am one of your hosts, Daniel. I am joined today with both Slothy and Brian. Slothy, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing pretty well, thanks. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing really good. We both uh, we both were celebrating all weekend, so it was, mm. was kind of nice. Uh, we're recording a little earlier than normal, getting ready for, yeah, Brian, that was a call it you laugh. Uh, we're we're getting, uh, getting ready to have uh, release of the set tomorrow, so going over the rest of them. Uh, lots of really, really exciting stuff in here. Brian, how are you doing? Oh, great. Even better that I found out that your yeah. birthday was yesterday and I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> Brian missed both of the co-host birthdays. Both of them. I, being the best man, yeah. know nothing. <laughs> right? Just... <laughs> it hurts. It hurts I, deep. I'm, I'm Jon Snow when it comes to dates. I, I know nothing. There you go. I can um, tell you when the World War II started, though. Yeah. I know that date. You got history facts on lock. <laughs> When did they change this rule in D&D? Well, actually, in the fifth edition of D&D on March to... Yeah. <laughs> as long as that has some sort of historical purpose, uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. We uh, we ended with Inga and Asika last week, I believe, because I think that's such a silly-looking card with the cats. It, I uh, love it. It's it's great. Um, let's, uh, let's jump right back into what we've got. Uh, it, as everyone knows, there's lots of cards coming out, tons of Commander spoilers. So uh, we'll jump right back in with Interdisciplinary Mascot. It's six double blue, uh, convoke five five with ward three. And I just I, every time I hear ward, I say that I love it. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of the library, one into your hand, and the rest in the bottom in random order. That's an okay rare. Yeah, you, at least you can blink it, and it does have ward. Yeah, but it is expensive. But it does have convoke. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know where I stand on it, but yeah, ward super strong ability. I really enjoy it, especially like the ones that are like ward three and sacrifice a creature or pay three life and sacrifice a creature like there's i, I really enjoy that they're changing it up rather than just paying for mana mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely i also want to say this thing's a five two. five yeah it's a big body but i don't know eight's eight's a pricey cost i understand but yeah uh we have into the fire two and red sorcery choose one it deals two damage to each creature planeswalker in battle that's solid removal uh and or uh, or you can choose putting number of cards from your hand on the bottom then draw that many cards plus one i actually really really like that i like that's on the bottom and not like the bin yeah usually you have to loot it away right yep usually yeah. red is a discard ability and not a bottom ability i also love the flavor text in the in the reference to the story the rest of the gate watch retreated chandra and ren went in blazing ren is thriving ren is thriving <laughs> 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 all right you guys just take these these Why? owl cards you don't want to you don't want to poison your mouth with them throw my neck out trying to read these sideways i'm the one that's had a bad back here sir there you go <laughs> uh, okay so we have invasion of alara we got wooberg for the cost and battle siege when invasion of alara enters the battlefield exile cards from the top of your library until you exile two non-land cards with mana value four or less you may cast one of those two cards without paying its mana cost put one of them into your hand then put the other cards exiled this way on the bottom of your library in a random order and then if someone wins the if the one person wins the battle, they get Awaken the Maelstrom. Sorcery. Awaken the Maelstrom is all colors. Target player draws two cards. You may put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. Create a token that's a copy of a permanent you control. Distribute three plus one plus one counters among one, two, or three creatures you control. And destroy target permanent and opponent controls. There's a lot to that. That's a big one. Words. Yeah, it it is seven two, so I get it. Plus, it's Wooberg. Alara's got hands. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be a nice foil, really nice foil. And next up, we've got Invasion of Arcavios, three double blue for another battle. It's got seven defense points. Uh, when Invasion of Arcavios enters the battlefield, search your library, graveyard, and/or outside the game for an instant or sorcery card you own. Uh, reveal it and put it in your hand, and then. If you search your library this way, shuffle. I don't even want to see Daniel play this card. Let mm. me go and search my collection. Hmm. Technically, that doesn't work in Commander, but we'll see. We'll see. Then that uh, flips into Invocation of the Founders. 
Uh, it's an enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. I like that side. Is there any way, like, through discussions from people seeing these battles, um, I guess I, I'm not really on social media all that much. Has anyone found a way to break these like battles not, yet? Not really that I've seen, but I, I also haven't seen too too much. Actually, I haven't seen much talk about battles. <laughs> yeah. So the next one we have here is Invasion of Fiora, four and two black. <clears throat> when Invasion of Fiora enters the battlefield, choose one or both. Destroy all legendary creatures or destroy all non-legendary creatures. It has four toughness or power or whatever that thing is. And then it flips over to Marchiza, Resolute Monarch. We got a human noble. Menace, Death Touch, whatever, Marchesa, Resolute Marquesa, Monarch, Brian, Attack, Marquesa. Marquesa. Such a and popular commander. I, I, I guess, no, I haven't never, like, I really haven't played against one of them. Really? Yeah, it's, Marquesa's yeah. cool. Marquesa? Um, okay, and then whenever Marquesa, Resolute Monarch, attacks, remove all counters from up to one target permanent. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you haven't been dealt combat damage since your last turn, you draw a card and you lose one life. That ability is pretty cool with the ability to uh, strip away everything from these battles. From from uh yeah from like a target opponent or to permanent. Yeah, or to wreck someone's yeah. attracts a day. Yeah, man, there was a lot of battles. Yep. Well, there was five or ten with every new commander deck. No, that's plane chase cards. Oh yeah, sorry. Whoops. Yeah, love plane chase. Forward to those. Uh, Please, Lothi, take, uh, or, or you want to take I'll one of take these there, one, Dan? Yeah, when invasion of Gaba can hand something <laughs> enters the battlefield, look at the. Oh, this is horrible. Wait, look at target opponent's hand. You can exile a non land card. Uh, you may play it. Spells cast this way cost two more to cast. Blah, blah, blah. Beginner you know, end step. Uh, put one one counter on each creature that attack this turn. Sack a creature you control, hex proof, indestructible. The, the problem is these are like pretty cool effects, but they're. They're just horrible. You got to flip everything. You got to read them like they're nonsense. They're not a good, yeah. Uh, like the Shield Array, the flip side of that one. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Invasion of Ikoria, X double green. It's got six toughness. Uh, when Invasion of Ikoria enters the battlefield, search your library and or graveyard for a non-human creature card with mana value X or less and put it onto the battlefield. Uh, if you search your library this way, shuffle. And that flips into Zalortha Apex of Ikoria. Uh, an 8 8 legendary creature dinosaur with reach. For each non human creature you control, you may have that creature sign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. That's pretty cool. I might have to just use one. So I need a dinosaur. This well, dinosaur. It, well, that. Uh, that it's Godzilla. That go and fetch effect is also very playable. Especially mm -hmm. it's enter the battlefield, so you can double it up. Pretty easy. It's it's pretty good. Yeah. The artwork on it's really neat, actually. The, the big beasts fighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? But yeah, I need that dinosaur in my life. It's very cool looking. Oh, there's so many of these battles. <laughs> Please, Brian, Onto, continue. Yes. I have to remember, I have to scroll here. Oh, we got two of the Ixlons? No, sorry, this is Invasion of Ixlon. Whoops. Uh so when Invasion of Ixlon, this one has four toughness, um, enters the battlefield. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it onto your uh, put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And then it, flip, and it costs a green and a colorless, and it flips, and it turns into belligerent Regisaur. <laughs> I need this one too. Uh, creature, dinosaur, trample. Whenever you cast a spell, belligerent Regisaur gains indestructible until end of turn, and it's a 4-3. Oh, belligerent. <laughs> Uh, next one is Invasion of Kaldheim, three in a red for four toughness. Um, when Invasion of Kaldheim enters the battlefield, exile all cards from your hand and draw that many cards. Until the end of your next turn, you may play the cards exiled this way. And it transforms into Pyre of the World Tree, an enchantment. You can discard a land to have it deal two damage to any target. Uh, whenever you discard a land card, exile the top card of your library and you may play it this turn. All right. I need that card. That's pretty it's good. Good and prosper. He likes land land deck, so well that's yeah. that's the board bird most true. thing. Not true. It's true, all, yeah. all about discarding. I need that card. So I, I I guess I have a story question. A little bit off topic here. For is the world tree still in Kaldheim? Like that yep. that, that tree's still there and it's fine. Yep. So like the people from Kaldheim are able to travel? 
Uh, well, the call time is different realms itself, so that's kind of what's going oh, on there. They gotcha. technically could probably travel because the world tree could pierce the blind eternities. But they have their all their worlds or realms connected. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so the next one we do have here is Invasion of Karsus. Two red red has four toughness. When Invasion of Karsus enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Blip. We got Refraction Elemental. Uh, Ward, pay two life. Whenever you cast a spell, Refraction Elemental deals two damage to each opponent. And it's a 4-4. Four, four. I like that's that. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, that's that's solid. And it costs four to get it down. And again, like if if it is the rules that whoever does blow it up, it still goes to you. All right, that's money. Mm-hmm. But well, yeah, you just get them. So. I really don't like that play though. Doesn't seem fair in all honesty. We have invasion of Sergovia. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you create two blue, two one one blue crack and creature tokens with trample. Uh, and then non token creatures you cast have convoke, and it's. Two and a blue and four defense counters, and then it turns into a three three. That's pretty solid. Uh, Convoke is good in the beginning of your end step. Untap up to four creatures. That's that's solid. Yeah, that one's yeah, good. I like that one. Um, we've got invasion of Theros. Uh, two and a white for four defense. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for an aura god or demigod card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle. And it transforms into Afara Ever Sheltering, a 4-4 four, four legendary enchantment creature god. Uh, Afara Ever Sheltering has life link and indestructible as long as you control at least three other enchantments. And whenever another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. That's very solid, too. Yeah, I, I quite like this one, too. The other thing is I don't have rarely auras or gods in my... Well, I got, I got a couple gods in my enchantment deck, but yeah, that could be useful. Well, the the other side is whenever an enchantment enters, you draw. That's that's good. Yeah, I would need to get it in there. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. So then we have Invasion of Talvada, three white black has five toughness. When Invasion of Tal Talvada enters the battlefield, return target non battle permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty good. It will flip into the Broken Sky. Enchantment, creature tokens you control get plus one plus oh and have lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, create a one one white and black spirit creature token with flying. I really like that. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Sorry about those noises. I don't know what that was. That was annoying. I didn't hear anything, so you're fine. No, it's on mine. Yeah. It'll be in the recording. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Um, we jump into finally cards that I care about. We have Knight Errant of Eos, uh, four and a white for a four four human knight with convoke. Uh, when it enters, like the top six cards of your library, you may reveal up to two creatures with mana value X or less from among them, where X is the number of creatures that convoked it. Put the revealed cards into your hand. That's super good. Mm-hmm. That's that's really, really good. Two yeah, creature actually... cards with mana value. Yeah. I, I really like that card a lot. Ooh, and it I... does have uh, the nice art, uh, nice alt art as well. Like the extended? Yeah. That's nice, yeah. Mm-hmm. This next one as well I want to talk about, because I really, really like it. Uh, I personally like it for like a more like a higher power thing, just as an include. But we have Kogla yeah. and Yadaro, two, two red, two green, seven, seven, eight dinosaur turtle. Solid stats. Uh, on enter, it gains haste and t- uh, trample and haste until on a turn or fights target creature you don't control, which is very good overall. But it's this mm-hmm. ability, the uh, two, one red, one green, discard Kogla and Yadaro, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment, shuffle it into your library, then draw a card. Like that's that's just such a good ability. The fact that it's so hard to interact with, it's giving you card draw as like a worst case mm-hmm. scenario kind of thing, and it's removal, which everyone needs more of. Like, yeah. And in red green, you're going to have the mana, or I would really hope you'd have the mana. Well, and the other thing too is there's so many games where you know that that player's holding up the counter spell to get their annoying thing off, but it's not often people are holding up a stifle. Yep. Yeah. True. Yeah. Like I said, this as an ability makes it much harder to deal with, so I like it a lot. The next one we got here is Nahiri's Warcrafting, one and two red. Sorcery, when Nahiri's Warcrafting deal, uh, sorry, Nahiri's Warcrafting deals five damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the excess damage dealt this way. You may exile one of those cards. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn. Yep. Yep. I don't really play red, so or at least that kind of red. I find that one okay. Zendikar must be broken. 
before it can be saved. Some nice flavor text there. Mm-hmm. And Dan, they finally made him. Hmm. Oh, that's lots of like this one. <laughs> he's not in a cave, though. He's in a cave. Um, next up, we've got Omnath, Locus of All. Uh, white, blue, Phyrexian, black, uh, red, green. And he's a 4 4 legendary Phyrexian elemental. If you lose unspent mana, it becomes black instead. And at the beginning of your pre combat main phase, look at the top card of your library. And you reveal that card if it has three or more colored mana symbols in its mana cost. And if you do add three mana in any combination of its colors and put it into your hand. Uh, if you don't reveal it, then put it into your hand. That's not too bad. It's pretty cool. Mm hmm. Really digging the third art, though. Yeah, the, yeah. I think that's the buy a box. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Ah, I will have some of those whenever they come in. Nice, nice. Uh, the next one is one that I'm phenomenally excited for. There will be a deck tech about this one for sure. Uh, we have Ortheon, Hero of Lava Brink. 3-1 red. Legendary creature, human soldier, which is a tribe I love. Uh, one in red, you tap it, create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control. It gains haste, sack at the beginning of the next end step, activate only as a sorcery. Uh, I really, really like that ability a lot. Second ability, six, triple red. Tap, create five tokens that are copies of another target creature you control. They get haste, sack them. Uh, activate only as a sorcery. This is so cool. Nice, I like that. Good. This could go into, what is it, Obika or or uh, whatever she is, because she can just end the turn right then and there. Oh, yeah, and exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's a token, a copy of another target creature you control, so... Yeah, there's a lot of really good so red much fun. ETB. Yeah. And it does have that full art. I will scroll down so the viewers can see that one. Oh, I get this one. Interesting. Ozolith, the Shattered Spire. One and a green legendary artifact. If one or more plus one plus one counters will be put on an artifact or creature you control, that many plus one plus one counters are put on it instead. Sorry? Plus one plus one. Okay, gotcha. And then one and a green to tap. Put a plus one plus one counter on target artifact or creature you control. Activate only as a sorcery, and it does have cycling too. Uh, I, I like the really artwork for it. Overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really I'm hoping cool. I pull some of these because... That's very cool looking too. Yeah, it's beautiful art. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be great in foil. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm a I'm a foil monster. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take these next two if that's all right. Yeah, please. It's the second one I was actually building right before these started. Nice, nice. Um, but the first one we got Pylon. Uh, it's an instant for three and a black. It has Convoke, uh, destroy target creature, Planeswalker, and Surveil two. And then we've got Polychronos Reborn. Uh, Four or five legendary creature Hydra for three green. He's got reach. Uh, you can pay six and a Phyrexian white to transform him and activate only as a sorcery. And he transforms into the Engine of Ruin, a six six legendary Phyrexian Hydra with reach and lifelink. And whenever uh, it or another non token Hydra you control dies, create a three three green and white Phyrexian Hydra creature token with reach and a three three green and white Phyrexian Hydra creature token with lifelink. That's yeah, a phenomenal card. I, I'm in love with this one. The fact and that the you can art is so oh, perfect. The, the constellation was beautiful, but the fact that it's they 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 worm coil engine these tokens, but it doesn't have to be mm-hmm. anything good. You can put any of the shapeshifters in, or you can just any of the X hiders. You can dump one counter into it and sacrifice them for six sixes. Yeah, exactly. Right, like that's that's such a good ability, and it it gets itself too, mm-hmm. and it's lifelink. Mm-hmm. Like that's. It's a problematic deck for sure. Like getting getting all these hydras out it, it is classically pretty easy. Mm-hmm. And then all of these hydras doubling up. It's I could see them being a, a real problem. Yeah, absolutely. The the flavor text is fantastic on this one. Yeah. Freed from the underworld, the world eater resumed his endless feast with le- reckless enthusiasm. <laughs> True. Um, yes, the constellation art is amazing. Oh, it's beautiful. In foil, that's mm-hmm. going to just be... It's, it's going to be so nice. Uh, we have Progenitor Exarch. Uh, XX white for a 1-2 Phyrexian cat cleric. Uh, when it enters, incubate 3x times, so great mana sync. Uh, tap, transform target incubator creature you control. That's really nice, actually. I think it's really cool. It's very good tribes, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Cat cleric, yep. Sloth, you want to take this next one so Brian can have the one after? Absolutely. 
Uh, we've got Quintorius Loremaster, three red and a white for a three five legendary elephant cleric with vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, exile target non creature non land card from your graveyard and create a three two red and white spirit creature token. Uh, one red and white and tap him to sacrifice a spirit. Choose target card exiled with Quintorius, and you may cast that card this turn without paying its mana cost. And if the spell will be put into a graveyard, put it on the bottom of its owner's library instead. He's one angry elephant, yo. Like Babar on steroids here. Look at his red eyes. Babar on heroin. Yeah. Red I... beady eyes. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, what is it? Um, the Strixhaven artwork version of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the mystical artwork. Like the, yeah. Well, that, that just looks amazing. Yeah. So the next card, which Daniel was so nice to give me, is Rampaging Raptors 2 and 2 Red. Creature Dinosaur with Trample and Haste. 2 and a Red Rampaging Raptor gets plus 2 plus 0 oh until end of turn. Whenever Rampaging Raptor deals combat damage to an opponent, it uh, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls or battle that player protects. So would that be like any any of them that are on that person right yeah that's what the protect means okay so it's a good way of playing battles in here because i have seen some really nice red battles so yeah true yeah uh we have another team up which is rankle and torbrand which i really like this card design uh we've got one double black double red a fairy dwarf first strike uh haste flying three four when rankle and torbrand deals combat damage to a player or battle choose any number each player makes a treasure, each player sacks a creature, and if a source would deal damage to a player or battle this turn, it deals that much plus two. I really like this one. I it's re- such a nice combination of the two. Yeah, I really yeah. like it. And the artwork's so silly in both of it. It's I really like it. Mm-hmm. I like the second one. They're like beating beating the crap out of something. Yeah. <laughs> He's going for their D's while Rankle's flying up for the eyes. Get him. <laughs> so I'll Sure. Realm Breaker, the Invasion Tree. Three colorless, legendary artifact. Two and tap. Target opponent mills three cards. Put a land card from their graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under your control. It gains if this land would leave the battlefield exile instead of putting it anywhere else. Ten and tap. Sacrifice the Realm Breaker, the Invasion Tree. Search your library for any number of Praetor cards. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Pardon? Yeah. I can easily make 10 in so many. <laughs> yeah, right. In a five color silly deck, this is great. But uh, that, that two mana ability is very, very good. Because it's, yeah. not, it's not a land that's milled this way. It's just a land. So if there was a land there already, you're good. Well, yeah, you can take people's fetch lands. You can take their evolving wilds kind of thing. Yeah. I really like that, actually. Yeah, I, I think it's a great ability. Too bad I don't have my XL deck anymore, Dan. Those lands leave them more. <laughs> you got rid of XL? Uh, I just merged it into uh, into Atraxa. Oh. Because they're, they're too close to being the same. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Sloth, do you want to take this next one? Because I want the one after it. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Rona, Herald of Invasion. One and a blue for a 1-3 legendary human wizard. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, untap Rona, Herald of Invasion. You can pay, or you can tap her. Uh, draw a card, then discard a card, and pay five and Phyrexian Black to transform Rona, activate only as a sorcery, and transforms into Rona Tolarian Obliterator, a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Wizard. Uh, it's got Trample. Whenever a source deals damage to Rona, that source's controller exiles a card from your hand at random, and if it's a land, you put it on the battlefield under your control, and otherwise you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Woof. Yeah, that's a pretty rough one. Yeah. At least, at last, I am complete. This could be a fun commander. Mm-hmm. You could. No, I, I think it has a lot of potential. Off. Like it's really cool. Mm-hmm. The stained glass is very cool of it too. Mm-hmm. I was just looking at that. Um, this next one I really, really like. C double. Uh, two double blue. It's an instant. This spell cannot be copied. You choose one. If an opponent has eight or more cards in the graveyard, you can choose both. So very, very playable for both. Copy target spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. A copy of a permanent spell becomes a token, that's great. Or create a token that's a copy of target creature. Uh, both very, very playable effects, but this is really, really funny if someone's trying to hard cast like a, uh, like somebody casts a blight steal, you get your own blight steal. Yeah, I'll take a copy of that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> or again, someone tries to Cyclonic Rift, you, you also Cyclonic Rift. 
It's uh, oh. I, I think this is a very, very playable one. Yeah. And I do like that the spell can't be copied. Yeah, I think not, it would, the spell can't be countered. Well, I think it's because it's a copy target spell, right? So you could keep copying itself if it was copied. Yeah. Oh, then you could just be create a token of that. Just Yeah. You'd only get one over. Well, or you could do the uh like uh Lutri does kind of the same thing, right? When Lutri enters you copy target spell. So you copy like a Lutri, copy this spell, copy a Lutri, copy this spell, copy a Lutri, Katri. Dual caster gotcha. mage for people who actually follow the ban list. Lutri did nothing wrong and he got new artwork. He did get new artwork. Yeah. True. He ought to be unbanned. Thanks, Brian. I'm, gl- I'm glad you appreciate me. Uh, Someone has to. Yeah, we also have Sunfall. A lot of people said they didn't like this, but I think it's really good. Uh, three double white, exile all creatures, incubate X, where X is the number of creatures exiled this way. So you get uh, incubator token with X11s one on it. I, I like that a lot. Let the light score away your imperfect flesh. Helioid. Yeah, Helioid. Helioid. The next one here, we got Ciroc and Goreclaw, four and two green legendary creature, human bear. Surprised Dan didn't want this one. Oh, I got, I, I got a bunch of these going. Ah, okay. We got Trample. Other creatures you control have Trample. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. It gains haste until end of turn. A very playable card, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I got, yeah, I want a copy of that. I have a bunch on pre-order for that. I think it's really cool. Haste nailers are always good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we've got Terror of Tawashi. Two double black for a 4-3 Phyrexian Ogre with Death Touch. And whenever Terror of Tawashi attacks, you may pay three and a black. When you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. That's good attack ability. Yeah. Uh, I also really like this transcendent message. Uh, X Quadra Blue with Convoke. A lot. Uh, draw X cards. I like it, though. Instant. Pretty good. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you've got a ton of cards, like in a Simic deck, you have like 50 Scoot Swarm tokens. That's nothing to, That's true. to yeah. pay four mana and then be like, I'll tap 20 cards or 20 creatures. That, you are right. Okay, I'll take back my... <laughs> yeah, so it's, this one, it's, I, I think it's going to mostly be paired with like Locust God nonsense where you're already full of card like tokens or Cyrus. Yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. right? Zerus you tap a bunch of snakes. All yeah. the tokens. So this one seems pretty neat. And I think I I'm gonna be slotting it into obviously attracts it if I can find a spot. Tribute to the world tree, three green enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card if its power is three or greater. Otherwise, put two plus one plus one counters on it. I like this one. I like this one a lot. Yeah. Really, really playable card. Mm-hmm. It's going to make elf decks go silly. Mm-hmm. Play all these 1-1s. One they instantly become 3-3 three, three elves. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, or like any creature-based deck, just the draw the draw, or making everything 3-3s three, on enter is crazy. Mm-hmm. And it's not non-token. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, that's that turns all your zero snakes into 3-3s. Three, it's disgusting. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Slothy, you take the next one, because I, I simply must have the one after. Alrighty. Uh, we've got Voldaren, uh, Thrill Seeker, 2 and a red for a 1-1 one, one Vampire Warrior with backup 2. You pay 1, sacrifice this creature, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Yep, yep. Now go ahead. Okay. Yargle and Maltani's <laughs> hilarious. I don't know why they would print this nonsense. It's it's so funny. Um, It's so good. So Yargle and Maltani is... <laughs> Three double black and a green. Six mana. In green as well. Not a hard not a hard thing to hit. That's a frog spirit elemental. That's an 18-6. It's just a vanilla 18-6 for six. Where has magic come to? I remember what the Crows and Cloud Scraper, which was like a 12-12 back in the day. That was Onslaught or Scourge, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> 18-16's dummy thick. Brian, mm-hmm. please, uh, please take this uh flavor text. Oh, I wanted to hear you read this. I'll I'll, um, I'll read uh, Maltani's parts. Okay, you you read. <laughs> uh, you'll you'll play the part of Maltani. I'll be I'll be Yargle, please. Yeah, I've heard much about you from my daughter. There was a time when I'd balk at your aid, Phantom, but she has given or she has shown me the merit in Urborg strange ways. <laughs> Replied Yarkle. Man, it's hilarious flavor text. Just, I just love it. Just, 
replied Yargle. No one here had a stroke. That's that's just what the card says. I love I love this card. I love the stained glass. I love the absolute absurdity of an eighteen six. Pardon, what did he say? <laughs> oh, I think we know. I won't wreck everyone's ears again. Oh, I think that was too good. Uh, please, someone, someone, continue. <laughs> All right. Our final rare that we've got here is Zephyr Singer, two double blue for a 3-4 Siren Pirate with Convoke, Flying and Vigilance, and whenever Zephyr Singer enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on each creature that convoked it. I like that they're bringing back uh, flying counters. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that some of the Ikoria stuff didn't didn't really have that stuff. It makes a little sense though, right? Uh, Before we do that, there's... uh an uncommon i'm just trying to find it here surge of salvation is definitely pick up and definitely a very keepable uncommon if you pull them uh it's one white you're gonna say astral wingspan no 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 uh it's one white instant you and permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn prevent all damage that black and or red sources would deal to creatures you control this turn which one was this again surge of salvation it's really really good mm-hmm. so trying to find in this list way way down in the s's Oh, it is alphabetical. Whoops. Hmm. Oh, we've also got Atraxas Fall, which is pretty good. I wish it was instant, but uh, it's destroy target artifact, battle enchantment, or creature with flying at two. And it shows the uh, it shows one of the new Capenna groups basically making sure Atraxas is dead. Fallen Angel should stay fallen. Henzi Toolbox Tori. Oh, I did see that card, and I saw that I really enjoyed the artwork, actually. Yeah, right. Um, there was one other Atraxa one. did nothing wrong. That, uh... That's a card I love, and I will take any amount of donations of this common card because this is every part of my playstyle. Uh, it's Fertile its Favor. It's three and a green. It's an instant. Target player searches their library for a basic land, puts it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle, and put two on one counters on up to one target artifact or creature. I can't wait to crack some boxes. Yeah, right? Like, it's it's such a cool card. It's it's all the group hug that I like. It's beautiful artwork, too. Send me these cards. On. Not moving on. Send me these cards. <laughs> I just start reading Brian's address. Um, <laughs> now, uh, now we're gonna quickly do the uh, PO we'll, box. Yeah, we'll 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 rip through some of these uh, new cards for the commander stuff. Uh, the first one is begin the invasion. If you like invasions, this is the card for you. Uh, it's X. I think this is one of the set booster ones. Uh, it's X one, Wo- like X and Wooberg. Search a library for up to X battles with different names. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. If you care about those. I do like the the kind of split or like the, the kaleidoscope kind of look at all the different uh, planes. Yeah, that's really cool. And who wants... The, uh, really, quick, really quickly before that, it's just the flavor text of it's so cool. Across many worlds, millions of eyes witness the same impossible horror. Ooh. Yeah. It's good. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the, that's the realm breaker coming into all these planes in the artwork. It's so cool looking. Oof. Yeah. All right. Please carry on with the face commander of the Naya deck. We have Bright Palm, Soul Awakener, one red, green, and white, Fox Shaman. Back up one. Whenever this creature attacks, double the number of plus one plus one counters on target creature. That creature can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this turn. The backup ability for anyone who missed it before, it's when this when it enters, you put a one-on counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it also gains the following ability. So it can get Bright Palm's ability for a turn. Oh wow. Yeah, pretty cool. That's really cool, actually. I saw people saying that it wasn't as good or they didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> well, it's because of the other commander. We'll get there. We'll get there. Sloth, you want to take this next one? Sure. Uh, next up, we've got Brimaz, Blight of Arescus. Uh, two white and a black for a 3-4 legendary Phyrexian cat. Whenever you cast a Phyrexian creature or artifact creature spell, it can be X, where X is that spell's mana value. And at the beginning of each end step, if a Phyrexian died under your control this turn, pl- proliferate. Proliferate's great. Attracts the deck. Show us that proliferate's great. Yeah, absolutely. They sure do. Um, this next one's one of the ones I'm the most excited about in all of the set. Uh, it's Alenda and Azor, and I love this. I love the flavor of it. I love the look of it. The art's cool. The effect's cool. We have three, one white, blue, black for a six, six flying ward two. It's a vampire knight sphinx. These tribes are awesome. Uh, yep. When Alenda and Azor attacks, you can pay X one white blue black if you do draw x cards i am in love with that ability this is letting me rip through my deck 
This is giving me the incentive to constantly uh, just like fill this with mana rocks, just like kind of like I did with Urza, right? Mm -hmm. At the beginning of each end step, not your end step, each end step, you may pay four life. If you do, you create a number of 1-1 one, one black vampire knight tokens with lifelink equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. Every part of this card is just super cool. If you have a consecrated sphinx, you're making tokens every time people play it. I see Brian smiling over there, yeah. Uh, but but again, just the fact that you can every turn be refilling your hand and making knights. Uh, you've got built-in lifelink. You've got a life loss yep. ability. I just, I'm so in love with the design of this card. And it's a really, really cool alternative vampire commander in colors you never get. Mm. Right? Yeah, true. Th this is the first time we've ever had a vampire-based commander, which is also like Edgar Markov-esque generating tokens, right? We have, we have a crazy token yep. generator, but we have access to blue something we never normally yeah. get in in vampires right. right like vampire control is a thing and vampires do take control it's i love it i love the design space of it i think there's so many cool ways to go with it i'm not just gonna fill it with mana rocks and draw my deck like um like there's a silly monkey but black and white vampires yeah exactly mm -hmm. i just, I just, I just think love it, that it's it, it's also like um its ability gives you blockers each turn so even if people are trying to attack you to deal with stuff each turn if you really want to well, and lifelinking blockers and in the color of like your Cathar's Crusade where you can constantly do that. You've got all your life gain. Paying four life is nothing in Commander. Especially because you're going to dump, you're probably going to draw more than four cards each turn. You're going to run like a Teferi's Agent's Insight. You're going to run all that stuff in this deck. Mm -hmm. 100%. So, so like even, even if I'm paying, if I have enough to pay for my Commander the next turn, I can just draw three and I'm in a draw deck. But I pay four life, I generate three creatures. That's an ability we would all run. Especially three life-linking creatures. Um, Slothy, I think you want this one. Um, I would actually like these next two, if that's all right. Please. So, um, first up, we've got Gimbal Gremlin Prodigy. Two green, blue, red for a 4-4 four, four legendary Gremlin Artificer. Which, awesome. It's pretty cool, yeah. Um, artifact creatures you control have Trample. And at the beginning of your end step, create a 0, zero red Gremlin artifact creature token and put X plus and plus one counters on it, where X is the number of differently named artifact tokens you control. I think that's a really um, interesting ability. I think, I think it's really neat. Yeah. It, it just, it gives a home for, for nonsense tokens. Absolutely. Right, like you have to be different names. Yeah, you're looking for Power Stone, Clue, Food, like all of it. I just love it. Blood. Oh, yeah, I didn't even yeah. think of blood, and you've got the red for the blood, blood tokens. tokens. Yeah. Yeah, your blood, your treasure, all of it. I think that's such a cool commander. Mm -hmm. And you're in blue and green, so you can have all of the, like, doubling abilities. Yep. Mm -hmm. I I just, I really, really like it. I also love that you are what you eat, and everything he eaten was brilliant. <laughs> I, I just love it. It's, yep. such, it's such a silly card. And please, take the next one, too. Yeah. This next one is one of my favorite commanders I've seen in a while. I refuse to believe that this is a real name. Every time I hear it, I just chuckle. It is Goro Goro and Satoru. <laughs> 34 legendary goblin human for blue, black, red. Whenever one or more creatures you control enter the battlefield this turn, deal combat damage to a player, create a 5-5 five, five red dragon spirit creature token with flying, and pay one or red creatures you control, gain haste until end of turn. I'm just filling this with as many one mana haste creatures. Yeah. Like, Raging Goblin. Well, haste, yeah. and you also have all of the ability to all the unblockable blue things, right? Anything mm -hmm. that Absolutely. your mass hysteria where you can get all your things through, you dump in uh, like the mm -hmm. infiltrator kind of cards and you just mm -hmm. crack me and get these five fives. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's very, very cool. And I see that. Yeah. Um, we also have Infernal Sovereign. I think it's a really cool card. Four double black, six, six demon. Fly and trample. You skip your draw step. Whenever you play a land or cast a spell, you draw a card and lose your life. I think that's a pretty powerful engine. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna take this next one too because my opinion on it has changed a lot. Uh <laughs> I, I initially thought that this was just a trash card, and uh I wasn't excited for it at all. It's Castle of the Broken Halo. Three, one blue, one red, one white for a five four angel ally. With Convoke, Flying Vigilance, Haste. Whenever you cast another spell that has Convoke, you scry to then draw a card. Uh, I, I thought I wasn't going to be excited at all for this deck, but there's a lot of really, really cool cards that uh, let you do shenanigans when you're tapping and untapping them. So 
I, I really, really like this. The deck design that this came in actually looks just phenomenally fun to play, like even with mild upgrades. And uh, I, I love a commander that gives me a draw option, right? Like a, anything like that scry yep. two and draw is, is pretty solid. Mm hmm. That uh, could be three cards if you really, really need to. Yeah, it's uh, I, like I said, I'm I'm really, really enjoying the design. The artwork actually is pretty cool. And uh, the stuff that they came out in the deck for the Convoke actually looks really, really fun. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I can't wait to get my hands on this deck and play around with it. Yeah, because what we were initially saying that like the Convoke part is because we, there wasn't that much. Yeah, I was convoke, like, I was like, but yeah, there's like, been, uh, well, we've no, been they, reading a lot. Well, they also they made a lot for the deck that has cool convoke things. Yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then the next new one is Catilda and Lear, liar, uh, green, white, blue, legendary creature, human. Whenever you cast a human spell, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. Uh, I really like that. That's neat, actually. Mm -hmm. And that artwork. The, it's all art looks amazing actually yeah, both of them look so cool i like the frame the frame looks really cool around it yeah i think the this one's neat we did the the teshar deck with um oh i totally forgot his name because it was so long ago yeah we had a guest on i can't even remember it was so long but we got moira and teshar did anyone want to actually take this one uh we'll continue then three <laughs> it was bento box anything? yes bento box yeah Actually, I really enjoyed that build. Yeah, it was really cool. Like I didn't, I, I, I've had Teshar and everything like that, and I never thought anything of it until he actually um, brought his deck on and like what took us through it. And yeah, it was it was strong actually. Um, so Moira and Teshar is three white black legendary creature, Phyrexian spirit bird. Flying, whenever you cast a historic spell, return target non-land permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step if it would leave the battlefield exile instead of putting it anywhere else. It's pretty cool. You can definitely end that trigger with the right kind of cards. But I think that that does like, uh, I think it's really interesting. It's interesting that they've tried to um, get around or stop you from saving it sorry people are being loud there um oh, no worries. yeah it's uh i also have to talk about the next one it's one of my favorite cards they've ever printed uh it's stupid every part of it's stupid i love it i love how dumb it is we have rashmi and ragavan and the artwork's so cool uh it's one one green one blue one red for a two four elf monkey whenever you cast your first spell during each of your turns exile the top card of target opponent's library and create a treasure token then you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost if its mana value is less than the number of artifacts you control. If you don't cast it this way, you can cast it anyways. I love this card. Free casting their spells is great, but also just like treasure token generation, and I can still cast their spells. Uh, it's a bummer. It doesn't say play. I'd love, I'd love to take people's lands. You say that, but then as soon as someone tries to take yeah, yours. I would love to take their lands. I wouldn't love to have my land taken. That's a good point. You got to learn to deal with it. Yeah. Um, I'll take the next one, and I think Brian wants the one after that, so give me one sec here. Now, we have St. Traft and Rem Karolus, one blue, one red, one white, for a 3-4 spirit human. Uh, when St. Traft and Rem Karolus uh, become tapped, create a 1-1 one, one red human creature token if it's the first time it's resolved. If it's the second time, you create a 1-1 one, one blue spirit creature token with flying. If it's the third time, you create a 4-4 four, four white angel with flying. Whenever you cast a spell that has Convoke, you untap Rem and Karolus. I think I think it's there. well. I, mm -hmm. I think it's a really really cool like uh, a token generation and something that's untapping in a convoke base deck. Very cool. Yeah. All right, Brian, take the next one. Will do. Yeah, I was really looking forward to this one. I was hoping that I could uh, like pick it up early or try to get my hands on it, but we gotta wait. Um, we got Shalai and Halar. One white, one red, green, and uh, sorry, one red, green, white, uh, legendary uh, angel elf, flying vigilance, and it's a three three. Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, or, uh, control Shalai and Halar deals that much damage to target opponent. Uh, I think I this think is that could be a lot of fun. I, I was I thinking like, this is hard to build a not hard like a, a not strong version. Well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> well there's so many ways that this just goes infinite immediately the all will be one card and one damage ends the game good thing i traded all mine in the all will be ones yeah there you go 
Uh, there's I was like, lots. a Traxxas not red. I can't put it in there. <laughs> uh, war, war Elemental, any of those kind of things, the same kind of stuff. Uh, th- there's just, everyone's played against a counter-based deck, right? Like, uh, I, I play Marath in these colors, and you can put a ton on. Like, Brian loves, his, Brian loves him at doubling season. It's, th- this one goes pretty silly. So I, I, I think Shalai Halar is going to be a really, really powerful deck to see at tables. Yeah, I'm sitting there thinking of like doubling season, um, even that new, um, oh. Well, think of a Cathar's Crusade. Yeah. You know, you put, you have 10 creatures, you play one, one card and it puts a 1-1 one, one on, you're now 11 creatures, you have 11 damage to divvy out. It's pretty disgusting. It is. I love the design space, I'm going to make it for sure. Oh, I, you, I know you are. I'm <laughs> interested to see how you build it and I built it. That's very true. <laughs> All of these commander cards are so cool. Uh, which one do you want, Slothy? This, which uh, one? I want this next one, if that's all right. Yeah, please, care. Uh, it's another one that I've already built um, from this set. It's Sadar Jabari of Zulfir. One white, blue, black for a 4-3 legendary human knight with eminence. Uh, whenever you attack with one or more knights, if Sadar Jabari of Zulfir is in the command zone or on the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Uh, flying in first strike, and whenever he deals combat damage to a player, return target knight card from your griever to the battlefield. Oh, that's a neat one. I really mm-hmm. like this card. I like every part I of it. Uh, I, I love its like loot effect. It's reanimate. Mm-hmm. It's it's eminence. The return of eminence is super super cool. I, I just I've, yeah, they designed yeah. this very very well. Yeah, it's uh yeah. I, I just I like every part of the design of this card. It's uh a really cool knight. I think the only knight commanders really have always been like Sir Gwen. Sir Gwen or like a Kenrith based kind of deck, right? But uh, I really like these colors uh, with your Sir Conrad stuff like that out. Like every time you're throwing these out, you're also draining people. You're bringing them back. I, I love it. Yeah. And, and getting a flying creature through to at least one player is not hard. Nope. Even without like you've you're in the colors of tons and tons of evasion. Like you're I, I, lo- I, I just like this design a lot. And then also speaking of designs I like a lot, we have Slamfoot and Squee, <laughs> two of my favorite characters in Magic, uh, in really cool artwork. It is one black, one red, one green for a 3-3 Fungus Goblin. Hilarious. Uh, when Slamfoot and Squee enters or attacks, create a 1-1 green Sapperling. I That's super cool. We have an ETB trigger that generates tokens and attack trigger that generates tokens. Yep. Then one black, one red, one green. You sack a Sapperling. Return Slimefoot and Squee and up to one other target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. There's no, like, you can freely swing with this every turn because on the enter, it's going to make you a Sapperlene. Somebody blocks and kills it. You're like, okay, cool. Like, you've already made one on an entering. You're going to give this haste. So two two go- or two uh, Sapperlenes every turn where you just throw one away to reanimate whatever you want in your deck. Uh, you're in red, so you can very easily loot everything to your grave and stuff, right? You can just, mm-hmm. oh, oh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll loot this, I'll loot this, I'll loot this, I'll throw, like, I'll throw out a Phyrexian Obliterator, and I'm gonna bring back Slimefoot, Squee, and a Phyrexian Obliterator. I even think like <clears throat> the the what the wonders in these colors, yeah, like the green one, adding what is it counters or is it preventing all damage to creatures you vigor? control? Yeah, oh yeah, vigor. Like, and then the red one gives all your creatures haste. Yeah, anger. Uh, I don't one, know the black one is. I think uh, the black one's like filth, and it gives them all swamp walk. Yeah, and that could be devastating in a game. Well, yeah, you you could just yeah. run Orborg. Uh, I just I, I love sapling generation and stuff. There's so many cool like your tender shoot dryads, that kind of stuff. Love that card, right? Uh, like all of your normal fecundity. Like uh, I, I like generating tokens. I love attack triggers. I love an ETB and. Yeah, this is it, it constantly is generating what it needs to bring itself back from the grave. So you've got this really, really, I think, unique like death and reanimation commander. Yep. And I love yeah. I love Squee in this. It's so cool. <laughs> he looks so scared in both of them. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, what else do we have for oh, we have also Bitterhorn Nissus Animus. Very, very cool card. It's three mana for a legendary artifact equipment with living weapon. Uh, equip creature gets one one. Whenever equip creature attacks, you may search for a basic land, put it on the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. Uh, I I love that. Which one was this? Ah, uh, Bitterhorn. I I scrolled down to the next new ones. Uh, okay. Um, was the Academy Manufacturer cr- what, uh, like not a new one? No, that's not no. a new one. That's a oh, that's a nonsense. Go infinite yeah. card all the time. Yeah, this is the first time I'm seeing it, so I was like, oh, this is new. 
Oh, you weren't you weren't around when I was playing my Lawness deck. It's not fun to play against. Yeah, I was like, if you create a clue, food, or treasure, instead of create one of each, I was like, I make all of all. I mainly make treasures. Lawness <laughs> Cryptozoologist is a not fun commander to face. No. Nope. You'd you'd probably like the deck not to play against, but you'd like to play it. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, we also have this. Uh, there's a Blight Titan. It's four to black, a Death Touch Phyrexian Giant six six. When it enters or attacks, mill two cards and incubate X, where X is the number of creature cards put in the graveyard. It's not horrible, so it's okay. Uh, we also have Chivalric Alliance, one in the white. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card, and pay two, discard a card, create a two-two white and blue knight creature token with vigilance. Uh, I really, really like that. And also, really, yeah. the flavor text is hilarious. It's I dub thee Sir Hellraker for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's him knighting a dragon. That's that's funny. Yeah. Um, Slothy, do you want to take this Conclave Sledge Captain? Sure. Uh, yeah, so Conclave Sledge Captain is a 4-4 four, four, uh, Elephant Soldier for 5 and a green. It's got backup 1, backup 1, backup 1. Uh, it has Trample, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus 1, plus 1 counters on it. Yeah, and the ability to spread I, that out is really cool. I like that. I really like that. Backing it up. There's so many... <laughs> cards to put plus one plus one counters on things now. Uh, Conjurer's Mantle is another really cool one. Uh, one in a white. Uh, it's an equipment. Uh, equipped creature gets one one vigilance. Whenever it attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You can reveal a creature that shares a type with it and put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom in, in random order and equip one. It's not bad at all. Yeah. Is the Cutthroat Negotiator new? It is, and it's awesome. I will read that one, even though I don't play red or blue you might start uh yeah who knows uh cutthroat negotiator two blue red orc pirate par oh parlay whenever cutthroat negotiator attacks each player reveals the top card of their library for each non-land card revealed this way you create a tap treasure token then each player draws a card Ooh. i love it one of my favorite mechanics yep i also have to take the next one because it's everything i love in magic I have to say though, like I'm, I'm really happy that the parlay sits on a pirate. Yeah, right. the The flavor text is pretty cool on too. Either you two figure out how to share. Or I'm going to share these swords with the insides of your skulls. Yes. Uh, we also Sounds have very piratey. <laughs> yeah. So dance with calamity is one that I love. Uh, it's seven and a red. Shuffle your library as many times as you choose. You can exile the top card of your library. If the total mana value of the cards exiled this way is thirteen or less, you can cast any number from among them without paying their mana cost. I love it. It was just another day on industry. Yeah, I love it. I just, it I think just it's so another day. <laughs> yeah, so cool to just be able to uh, sit there and Russian roulette it. Yeah, am I getting? I'm playing blackjack. Yeah. Hit me, hit me, hit me. That's that's hilarious. In any of the uh, my Maria deck, the one that destroys all the lands and has all the zero cost artifacts, this this might hit like forty percent of my deck. Bring everything out. Yeah, that'd be that'd be crazy. Um, we also have the Dark Steel Splicer. Uh, six and a white for a one one. That's rough to to deal with. Uh, whenever it or another non token Phyrexian enters under your control, you create X three three Phyrexian Golem artifacts where X is the number of opponents you have Golems you have uh, control have indestructible. It's okay, but that's that's still like rough. That's deep. Uh, I like seeing that Golems is getting a little bit of a yeah. tribe, but yeah, that price is this Death Greeter champion new. Uh, yep. Slothy, do you want this one? Oh, go ahead. So we got Death Greeter's Champion, two and a red, Human Warrior with Dash, three and a red, back up one, and it's sitting with a two one with Double Strike. Yeah, it's okay. Surprised it's rare. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, then next up we've got Deluxe Dragster, four and a blue for a four three vehicle. I uh, can be blocked except by vehicles, and whenever Deluxe Dragster deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target instant sorcery spell from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. And if the spell will be put into a graveyard, exile it instead, and it has crew two. That's pretty good. Only cool. be blocked by a vehicle. That's getting through. Yep. Like ninety mm-hmm. percent of the time. It's mm-hmm. a pretty cool one. Yeah. Uh, we have a new cycle of uh, set booster only cards. This is Elspeth's talent, so that's the talent cycle. Uh, two double white. These are uh, Enchant Planeswalkers. So it's an aura Enchant Planeswalker. Enchanted Planeswalker has plus one create three white soldier tokens, which is a great ability. 
-hmm. And whenever you activate a loyalty ability or an enchanted planeswalker creature you control, get two two and gain vigilance. Pretty good. Oh, that's, that's really good. Yeah, pretty pretty good for the planeswalker theme. And we have emergent woodworm. That's the next one. Yep. So we got backup three, and whenever, or sorry, it's six and a green um, creature worm, backup three, whenever this creature attacks, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is its power. You may put a permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. It's not horrible. It can come down as a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yep. Yeah. It's a lot of teeth. I, I do like that this backup is an ETB. I think it's a really cool way of getting tokens onto things. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want the excise, Sloppy? Sure. Uh, next up, we've got excise the imperfect. One double white for an instant. Exile target non-land permanent. Its controller incubates X, where X is its mana value. It's a very good card. Mm -hmm. More removal. For any non-land permanent, that's great. And exile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Avacyn does nothing. You'll do nothing. Uh, we also have Exsanguinator Cavalry. Uh, two and a black for a 2-3 Vampire Knight with Menace Lifelink. Whenever a knight you control deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 counter on that creature and create a blood token. Mm, yeah, there's your blood tokens. I'm, I'm okay with that. It's okay. Um, I'll take the next two quickly as well. We've got Filigree Vector. Three and a white for a Phyrexian Construct. When it enters, put a 1-1 counter on each of any number of target creatures and a charge counter on each of any number of target artifacts. One and a tap, sack another artifact, proliferate. That's very cool. I think that's pretty cool. It's a sack outlet. It's proliferating. Um, the one I care about is I love group hug in every way, shape, and form. And we've got Fire Main Commando. A, I have a lot of these on pre-order. Uh, three and a white <laughs> for an angel soldier. Two tribes I'm in love with. It's four, three flyer at four mana. Uh, whenever you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card. It's got draw built in. Love it. Whenever another player attacks with two or more creatures, they draw a card if none of those creatures attack you. 80 deals. Yeah, I really like that one a lot. You and your shady deals. <laughs> I think it's super cool. Ooh, I want the next one too. I really like this as well. Flock Chaser Phantom. Uh, four, one white, one blue for a five, five spirit with Convoke. Flying Vigilance. And when it attacks, the next spell you cast this turn as Convoke. Like I said, they made a lot of really cool stuff for Convoke. <laughs> as that uh, as that deck list came out, I, I got more and more excited about it. Yeah. They, they're they doing like a really good job with this round with printing like I think a lot of needed lands I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, next new one that we've got here looks to be the Guardian Scale Lord, uh, four and white for a three four dragon with backup one with end fly. Whenever this creature attacks, return target an online permanent card with man value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is this creature's power. Super super good Sun Titan like ability. I really like that. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, like that's X. Yeah, right. Uh. This isn't a new card, but it's a really cool reprint for the deck it's in. It's the Hakon Stromgold, uh, Stromgold Scourge. It's one double black for a 3-3 three, three zombie knight. Uh, you can cast it from your graveyard, but not from anywhere else. As long as it's on the battlefield, you can cast night spells from your graveyard. And when a Hakon dies, you lose two life. So letting yeah. you like filter through those is awesome. That's really neat. Yeah, I, 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 that's it's such a cool card, and it's so hard to play in Commander because it's... How do you get into the graveyard reliably a lot of the time, right? Yeah, that's true. And, and Buried alive. And knights weren't like enough of a thing. It, it lets you cast knights. If this said, if you, you may cast knights or zombies from your graveyard, this would be extremely yeah. played. This would be an expensive card. Speaking of cards Ooh. that I think are going to be an expensive card, uh, we have Headrun Detonator. Two and a red for a goblin artificer. Whenever an artifact enters under your control, Headrun Detonator deals one damage to target opponent. That's so cool. And tap mm -hmm. sack two other or two artifacts, exile the top card of your library. You can play this turn. Uh, this is just a really, really cool deck for anyone who's like generating tons of artifacts or tokens, like treasure token decks. Dockside loops. Give Urza red. Yeah, right. I also like complete this. Is the Herald of Hoofbeats new? Yep. Okay. We got Herald of Hoofbeats, three and a blue human knight with horsemanship. This creature can't be blocked except by creatures with horsemanship. Other knights you control have horsemanship, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. Mm -hmm. I, I really, really like this one. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be enjoying knight decks here soon. Yeah, the, the Sidar deck looks solid out of the box. It looks like a monster deck. Mm -hmm. Is High Sentinels a new card, or is that a reprint? Uh, that's a reprint. Okay, I thought. All right, uh, that, we, was in, that was in cons. Okay, there you go, there you go. Uh, we have Ikra oh. Elixir. Four mana, it's something that cares about Planes Chase decks. 
Uh, four mana, if you would roll one or more planar die, instead roll that many planar die plus one and ignore one, and tap to add two mana. It's it's okay if you're playing planches. Or yeah. or if you just need like a generic mana rock and you happen to have one. Uh, what else do we have that's new here? We've got Liliana's Talent, another one of the auras. Double black. Uh, Enchanted Planeswalker has minus eight. Put all creatures from all graveyards onto the battlefield under control. And whenever a creature deals damage to Enchanted Planeswalker, destroy it. Jeez. Right? That's nice. I like Truth. the artwork too. Got the black and white artwork in the back in the back of behind her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I'm going to assume the Lockthwain Lancer's new. Um, four and a black human knight menace. Whenever another, uh, whenever a non-token knight you control dies, each opponent loses one life, and you draw a card. Nice. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, what um, else do we have? Oh, we have this mirror style. Mirror style. Yeah, um, you want that, Slothy? Sure. Uh, so mirror style master uh, for double red for a three three human warrior with backup one, and whenever this creature attacks, for each attacking modified creature you control. Create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature and exile those talk tokens at the end of combat. Yeah, I like that one. I, I, yeah, I like that one too. Uh, I also love this new one, the Mist Meadow Vanisher. The artwork's so cool looking. Mm-hmm. Uh, two and hybrid Azorius, so either a blue or a uh, white. Kithkin Wizard 3 2. When it becomes tapped, exile up to one target, non land, non token permanent. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Oh, I see why. Yeah, so cool. I see right? why you like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like it too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a really really cool one. Let's see a new deer crack and getting a reprint. Mm-hmm. Is uh, nesting, nesting dovehawk a new one? Yeah, yeah that, that okay. looks to be new. Nesting dovehawk, three and a white bird, flying at the beginning of combat on your turn. Populate. Oh wow! And then whenever creature token enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on nesting dovehawk. That's pretty solid. Yeah, that's really yeah. nice, actually. I like Populates came back. Mm-hmm. Um, the next new one here is Pain Distributor. Two and a red for a 2-3 Devil Citizen with Menace. Whenever a player casts their first spell each turn, they create a treasure token. And whenever an artifact an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, Pain Distributor deals one damage to that player. I love that. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy that one. Group hug, I love group that he's wearing a, a golf hat. I he looks like a real citizen. Am going to rip through these next ones. So this is another cycle from it. It's the path cycle. All of all of these have Will of the Planeswalker, which is again planes chase stuff. So all of them have starting with you. Each player votes for Planeswalker Chaos. If Planeswalk gets more votes, uh if if Planeswalk gets more votes, you planeswalk. If Chaos gets more votes or is tied, chaos ensues. And that's just the top and the bottom of these planeswalk uh cards, planes chase cards. Uh, so the first one's Path of the Animist. It's three and a green. You search the library for two basic lands, put on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Just an explosive vegetation. It's okay. Uh, we have Path of the Enigma, the blue one, four and a blue. Target player draws four cards. Again, not horrible, five for four. Uh, Path of the Ghost Hunter, which is really cool art. Uh, it's X, one, and one white. You create X, one, one, white spirit creature tokens with flying. That's a great card, very playable. Uh, the red one, Path of the Pyromancer, I like a lot. It's four colorless, one red. Discard all cards in your hand. Add a red for each card discarded this way, then draw that many cards plus one. I think that's super, super cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, we've got Path of the Schemer, which is some cool Tezzeret art there. Uh, four and a black. Each player mills two cards, and you put a creature from the graveyard into the battlefield under your control. It's an artifact in addition to its other types. Pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I also think Perplexing Test is new too, isn't it? Uh, that one was not new. It's not new. It's just a really cool card. Oh, yes, you're right. You're right. It's just new artwork, I think, at least. Well, well I'm not going to look right now. Uh, we also have Rowan's Talent. It's two and double red Enchant Planeswalker. Enchanted Planeswalker has plus one. Up to one target creature gets two O and gains first strike trample. And whenever you activate a loyalty ability of Enchanted Planeswalker, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. That's really good. I like that. I think that's infinite with the Teferi thing. I think that's the the blue Planeswalker Teferi is all about chain veiling so you can double up the untap. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I like it. Fortunately, I don't play Planeswalker, so I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but yeah. soon. Um, next up, we've got Sandstep War Riders. Three and a green for 4-4 four, four Human Warrior with Trample. At the beginning of combat on your turn, bolster X, where X is the number of differently named artifact tokens you control. Very cool. Mm-hmm. That one's cool too. Okay, is Schema Thief new? Uh yep. 
Schema Thief, three and a blue for a Vidalcan Rogue Artificer. Flying, whenever Schema Thief deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of target artifact that player controls, and it's a 3-3. I like that. Yeah, I think that's very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another talent as well, Teferi's talent, three double blue. Another Planeswalker enchant. Enchanted Planeswalker gets an M, uh, has minus 12. You get an emblem with, you can activate loyalty ability of Planeswalkers you control on any player's turn anytime you can cast an instant which is absolutely cracked. And whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Enchanted Planeswalker. No. That's so good, right? Broken. Yeah, the fact that you can uh, do the Teferi Master of Time thing with all your Planeswalkers gets pretty out of control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they reprint, reprinted Temple of Aba uh, Abaddon. Um, we've got Uncivil Arrest, Unrest. Four and a red, no, uh, it's an enchantment. Non-troken creatures you control have riot, which is an ability I really like. And if a creature you control, the one-one would deal damage to a permanent player, deals double damage instead. I like it. Woof. Yeah. Ooh, now it's Shalai and Halar dealing damage, so that would double it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that they're reprinting a lot of like the removal I use, like Utter End. I think that one's a really good reprint. I, I like the Vanquisher's Banner reprint as well. Yeah. That one was getting up there. That is getting up there, yeah. Whenever you cast a creature spell, oh. the chosen type, you draw a card. That's pretty great. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want the yeah. Vivian's Talent? Me or Slothy? Either are. Sure, I'll take it. We got Vivian's Talent. One and two green. Enchanted Aura. Uh, enchantment Aura. Enchant Planeswalkers. Uh, Enchanted Planeswalker has plus one. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal the, uh, you may reveal a creature or a land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in random order. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a loyalty counter on Enchanted Planeswalker. I like that one a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be... I think I could abuse that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we've only got a few oh. more left here. Slothy, you want this one? Yeah. Uh, this next one is Vidalian Wave Knight. Two white and a blue for a 3-3 Merfolk Knight. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one on each other Merfolk and or Knight you control. I think that's really, really think, good, especially because we've got mm -hmm. the white Merfolk stuff. Yeah. It's a powerful one. We also have this Vulpine Harvester. 3-1 uh, white for a Phyrexian Fox 3-3. Three, three. Whenever one or more Phyrexians you control attack, return target artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. Its mana value is less than or equal to their total power. So just even attacking with this, you're going to be able to bring back like command spheres and just constantly throw them away and draw. You're the fox given strength to match its cunning. Yeah, right. Um, Wand of the World Souls next? Yeah. Two and a white. Wand of the World Soul enters the battlefield tapped. Tap to add one white. Tap it. Uh, the next spell you cast this turn has Convoke. So you can give your... Nice. I like that. I really like that. Yeah, I like that one. And then, Slothy, you want to end us off here with our last one? Sure. Uh, the last one we got here is World Fire Awakener. X, one red white for a 3-2 human wizard with Convoke. And when World Fire Awakener enters the battlefield, create X, one, one red elemental creature tokens with whenever this creature becomes tapped, it deals one damage to target player. That's so cool oh, to convoke. Yeah, so I... you're able to convoke power, convoke these things. Mm, I like that. Yeah. I think that yeah. there's like a lot of really, really playable stuff in this set. Absolutely. Can I throw this guy on uh, the, the scepter? So I can cast them over and over again. <laughs> yeah, right. It's definitely pretty cool. Um, really quickly before we're done, like, what what are your thoughts on these? Now that we've gone through the whole set, like, are you excited for these cards? Uh, was Whirlwind a thought new? No, no. Old. I have not seen that card. Yeah, that was also cons. Gonna need one of those too. Yeah, it's it's a good one. Um, I'm excited. I'm actually really looking forward to. I got a couple boxes. I'm really digging into, um, or looking into opening them up. I think I saw. Um, I saw some of the foils of the Praetors and they looked great. Like I saw the foil boring, boring Clex, mm -hmm. um, and a couple other cards, saw some people like pull the, the Ragavan with a special art and frame. So I'm excited for that. I think that's um, like 200 bucks or something. Yeah. Like I'm really excited to see what I can, um, pull out. True. It's a lot of your yeah. thoughts. Uh, there's a lot in this set that I, I really, really like, um, I, really really like how they themed the alt arts towards the specific plane mm -hmm. um I, I love a lot of the new commander options gimbal is phenomenal and i'm gonna have a lot of fun abusing that one these these look so fun like uh mm -hmm. yargle 
Y ella como... I'll, uh, Please call 911. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll end there. I, I think everyone knows how I feel about these. There's like 30 decks I want to build out of this set, which is nuts. I have one question for you. I'm running out of space. Please tell me about battles. No, battles are trash. About <laughs> trash mechanic. <laughs> Let me know if I'm wrong. But yeah, I will end there before I start another 25-minute rant about uh, about battles. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for getting to the end of the episode. This one's a little bit of a longer one. Obviously, spoilers always go pretty long. But uh, yeah, it's I, I really appreciate everyone who listens. Uh, if you get a chance, like, share, subscribe. It, it really helps a lot. If you want to go a step above and beyond, uh, come check us out on Patreon. Lots of cool conversations go on there. Lots of deck building. We're going to be talking lots about the uh, stuff coming up. It, it's a great group. A great way to say great way to support us a little bit even more check out our youtube stuff uh all of our content is on into the 99.com so definitely stop there and yeah i hope everyone has a great week let me know how your polls go i never pull good so yeah everyone wish brian luck from the Thank from you. the past yes yeah because by the time this is up you should have your cards yeah who knows yeah. and yeah, yeah thank you uh thank you guys everyone for listening again I, I really appreciate it every week when people check the episodes out so for everyone who gets through it all and gets the end of the episode i appreciate you thanks so much and have a great day yeah i love you guys see ya